Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting Lord Duckman production. I'm your host, Lord Duckman himself. <laughs> We're back today with this 1971 square back that you've seen me working on for a while. And today's goal is to get this engine mounted in here. That's right. We're trying to get this thing running before the end of the day, or at least before the end of this video. This is probably going to be a several-day thing because uh, there's a lot of things and a lot of hoops that I have to jump through because we're changing and adjusting and making a lot of uh, minor modifications to many, many things. This thing was just overheating terribly when I got it here. You probably saw I went and torqued down the heads. I went and made a bunch of adjustments. I had the whole cooling system all apart, and now we've got it all back together. The engine, as you might remember, I got pushed back into place, but it's not ready to be mounted yet. And one of the problems is, is because uh, this is something I overlooked, but the wire to the starters is all tangled up on top of the transmission. So I'm going to have to lower the engine and transmission combination down just a little bit pull the wire back out, put it back into place. I gotta resync the carburetors, I have to replace the distributor. But again, the goal by the end of this video is to have this thing running. So cross your fingers, guys. <laughs> Let's see what happens. As always, leaky likey, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bellies to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Anyways, we'll be back right after that intro. in place but again it's not where it's gonna stay I gotta bring that thing back down because the wiring is all tangled up on top of it so you know it's just a matter of um, pulling the bolts out because I just have them slotted into the holes lowering it down on the jack and from there we should be able to untangle the wire and get it hooked up correctly because you remember I disconnected the wiring last so that means we got to put the wiring back in first and then we can move on from there and, uh, here was that starter wiring that was all tangled up it's appropriately now connected to the starter and it's ready to go. The wiring that's over here, this one white wire that's dangling down, that's actually the ground wire to the uh, hot start relay that you see right there. I'm not too keen on where that's at. I still may relocate that. We'll see uh, We'll see what the best way is to do that. This is a Type 3, and I just remembered that. I don't think it has the red wire running underneath the, uh, the back seat the way a Beetle does. So it may not be easy to relocate to that location. We still have that stray wire also, which I'm beginning to think is for the cylinder head temperature gauge that this thing has on the dashboard. There's no sensor on it. Uh, sensor seems to be missing. Let's we'll see if we can uh, locate one for the owner because I think the owner would rather have that on here than not, considering this thing was overheating so badly when we got it. Cylinder head temperature gauge would have indicated that. Well, okay, we're in a good spot to lift this engine back up and get it back into place. Um, once it's in place, well, it's just a matter of starting to hook some of these things back up and getting rid of that fuel filter that's in there. There's actually one down there. You can see it, so this thing had two anyway, so I can either relocate that one to there or leave that one alone. Um, yeah, the fuel pump is in here. It's not an electrical one up front as I would have put on here. This mechanical pump is actually just fine. But yeah, okay, well, that still needs to come out either way. And then I need to put just a little junction in there to couple the two lines together and then I have to work on this fuel line over here to stop it from getting in the throttle linkage because this is just you know that's dangerous it's just wearing on it I think I could probably prop this stuff out of the way yeah in fact look at that see how simple that was simple solution <laughs> I'll just put a little zip tie on it to make sure it stays there but that solves the problem okay well fantastic all right let's get this engine back lifted into position and uh See if we can get some bolts in this thing. I want to make some big progress today. Oh yes. Look at those wires again. That red and black wire that's down there that's mystery. That does appear that it's probably a cylinder head temperature uh, sender wire. And the reason why I say that is because it's close to cylinder number three. And also when I went and looked at the gauge, the wiring on it happens to be black and red. And so most likely that's what it is. Um, I can continuity chest test it and I probably will, but we need to get a sender for this thing and make sure that this thing gets hooked up. I don't even know if it works. Being it doesn't have a sender on it at all, it's impossible to tell if it works until we actually get the parts for it. So I'll let the owner know about that, see what she wants to do. She'll probably want to have me install that. I mean, that's what I would recommend. If it's there, you kind of need to make it work. If you don't have one, I guess you can get away without one, but. Uh, I'd rather have it, especially looking at the history of this car. All right, well, engine's going in. 
Those wires can stay where they're at for the moment. In fact, they look a little bit frayed. Look at that. Looks like something was rubbing on it. Maybe it was a drive axle. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Meanwhile, let's get this engine put in. Well, humidity's starting to come up out here, so yeah. Duckman's gonna start sweating. All right, well, there's our first bolts or pins, if you will, that are put in here. This is the mustache bar, so I just simply jacked it up, put a Phillips head screwdriver in there just to find the hole and to lever it into place and then just slip the bolt in. Uh, it's the same on both sides right now, so these jack stands that are under here can actually go away. They don't need to be there anymore. The engine essentially is hung. I need to get up front and I need to mount the, uh, the bolts that are in there that go to the uh, torsion tube. There's four of them up front. I need to get at least one of them in there to make sure that we're in a good spot. At that point, that jack can come out. So that's where we're at. Everything's good otherwise. Everything looks good like it's mounting. I don't have any more tangled wires or anything. There's that red and black wire, the cylinder head temperature gauge wire, which is what we're assuming that probably is. Gotta get these axles remounted too. I don't like doing... I don't like doing anything with CV joints. CV joints just... Yeah, that's the bane of my existence. CV joints just suck. Absolutely suck. <laughs> A friend of mine, Sean, says, Hey, you got any CV joints? I'll be glad to do them. I love them. That's your problem, buddy. <laughs> anyway, I might take them up on that. I also need to cap off the uh, cooling here, so I haven't bought the plumbing plugs for that yet, but I'll do that later today. I think it's expected to rain, so we can have it running without it, but of course I'm not going to be driving it around where it has the potential of overheating all over again, but we can certainly start it up if we get that far before it starts to rain. Uh, it's supposed to rain for the next couple days. It's in the forecast, another reason why I'm out here so early this morning. But with how beautiful the weather is here in the morning, I, I might do this more on the regular. This is a good chance for me to get a lot of things done without getting too awfully sweaty. Okay, well, we're in a good spot here again. I love saying that. Whenever I'm in a good spot, I like to put a bookmark in things and maybe move on to the next, uh, the next project. Um, oh, while we're under here, look at that. I didn't expect to see that underneath this beautiful car. This is its uh, little skeleton in the closet, if you will. So when I push on this rear bumper, look. Yeah, that is going to become a future issue. I'll have to let the owner know about that one. That's the only rust that I found on this car, though, that's of any significance. I mean, there might be a little surface rust here and there on some suspension components or something, but uh, that's the only real body rust, so that will need to be fixed at some point. This rear valence that's in here also, you probably notice there's two layers. That's because this is metal. This is fiberglass. Somebody replaced this and uh, glassed it all in, so... This is not original to this car. Well, I imagine a lot of the body parts on this car are not original because this thing is rebuilt from all kinds of stuff. Just grafted together. Beautiful car otherwise though. I mean, I would, I would rock and roll this thing. I think it's gorgeous, but uh, like Eleanor, this car was pieced together just from other things. Okay, we're good. Let's get topside, find the bolts for the front, and then uh, try to slip a couple of them in. Right up under here. And these front engine mount bolts, the one here that you see on the left, you probably notice it's longer than it should be. That's because that's a top bolt and not a bottom bolt. And why did I run that in the bottom when there's a short one on the bottom on that side? That was done deliberately because I couldn't reach when I put the bolt in to get to the threads. The bolt would not reach the threads on the other end, which would not pull the engine, which would not pull the transmission into the torsion tube. So, the longer bolt actually did that, and it might be a reason why Volkswagen actually included the longer bolt. Anyway, I got the short one started on that side, the long one's about to come back out, then I'll put the short one back in, then we should be able to lower the jack. That's where we want to be. But there we go. Both of the proper bolts are in place. Neither one of them is tight yet. They're not even snug. They're probably about two turns away from being tight. That's on purpose. You still have to put the long bolts in there. But I'm not gonna do that until this plank of wood is out of the way and the jack is removed. It gives me a lot more room to move around under here. But again, you don't wanna tighten them yet because if I do, then there's a good possibility that the top bolts, they won't go in. Something will come out of alignment. So anyway, slug them all up at the same time, not prematurely. All right, there's a white wire here. This is for the starter um, hot start relay. That was originally attached to a bolt right here on the uh, transmission pan, and I'll probably put it right back where it was. I think that's going to be the best spot for it, is just to return it to where it came from. Okay, well, good. 
We're almost ready to come out from underneath here otherwise. I'll start relay ground wire reattached. Good. All right, back top side we go. Jack comes out. Yeah, come out. Yeah, we're good. That's good because I needed that jack to lift up the front of the Z. The Z's got a little steering issue. I don't know what it is, like a loose ball joint or something, or maybe it's a, a bad wheel bearing. It feels like it's on the right hand side. It's just, it's odd because when you're driving, it's hard to describe other than as you're going over contours in the road, I can feel the wheel pushing against me, which is something you never did, which tells me one of the wheels is, it's in, you know, it's got play in it. Steering back and forth though doesn't seem loose. I don't hear any knocking or anything like that, so I don't know. Anyway, we'll jack up the front, we'll figure that out, but that's a subject for another video. Okay. Meanwhile, I guess I can pull those jack stands out from under there too. Uh, let's finish running in some of those engine mount bolts and let's get the rest of this squared away. And here's our mustache bolts. Get that in there. Got to run some nuts on the back side of that. And that will secure the rear mounts of this engine. All right, well, the engine is mounted. The sun just started coming up above those trees up there. That means it's about to start getting hot as hell. So it's time for me to retreat my vampire-like white skin and get back into the house. But anyway, the engine is mounted. That's good. It's effective. Uh, really, the, the, the heavy physical stuff is done. Now that I say that, of course, I'm probably going to find myself pulling it back out again. <laughs> Do have to hook up the CV joints, get some wiring done in here, hook up throttle linkage, uh, shifter linkage, and get the fuel filter out of the engine compartment. But from where we're at now, this is a good stopping point. So let's go ahead and start uh, closing some stuff up and we'll come back on this thing as soon as the sun disappears. And I get a little shady spot over here. One hour later. All right, well, we are back with all the fun fiddly stuff. Yes, all the little things in here that now need to be hooked up like wires and throttle cables, and fuel lines and all that great fun stuff. All right, one of the first things I remember was there was this little red jumper which connected to the right side here and the inside of this alternator to the positive on the coil that seems to be the far side yeah there actually is a positive and a negative on the coil and that will affect which direction the spark travels in believe it or not I think if you run it in reverse, it affects the efficiency by like, I don't know, 5 or 10% or something. So it's always better to run it in the correct direction. But anyway, the red wire was on the left, and it's also on the left on this side. The blue wire here was on the right, and this is just going by memory. Everybody always tells me, Doug, man, you should take notes. I don't need to take notes. I take videos. <laughs> but this is how this is going to go on here. We got our positive from the... Ignition. I should say from the ignition system. From the distributor here. And we got our negative, which will hook up to the negative side of the distributor. Now, this whole distributor is going to get swapped out anyway. Before I monkey with that though, I want to see it run. When it runs, then we start upgrading things. So if ever the other other way around, that's when you end up with more problems. And there was a green wire here which uh this one this green wire here I'm not sure what it goes to but typically there's a ground wire in this uh, this bundle this is probably it I'm gonna check for continuity on that and just make sure but it's probably exactly what it is and this wire just happens to reach over this way is to our oil pressure switch we have the charging wire from the alternator right there and then lastly, we have our ignition wire. And this is the wire that when you turn the key on, powers up the entire engine compartment. Okay. It's actually in a good position. It's up and out of the way. It's not touching anything that's moving. Well, I guess it's kind of touching that. Maybe I should route that underneath. Yeah, I'm gonna route that underneath. I think that would just be wise. No sense in uh, leaving things in a position that they're going to wear or have a problem. I mean, that's the way we found this thing. It's not the way we're going to leave it. I'm trying to do this right. Okay, let's put this 
underneath. There we go. Oh, I like that much better. Much better. Now it's down and out of the way. Alright, here's our charging cable. Got that hooked first. There's a nut that goes on to it. A blue wire right here. Here's our oil pressure wire. This is the only one that's going to go over the hex port because it has to. It's too short to go underneath. That's our throttle cable. We're going to fix that in a minute. This goes through here. Good. And that's nice and up and out of the way. It's not going to rub on anything. And here's the stray wire, which I believe is a negative, like I said. But we're going to we're gonna check that. This was not connected to anything. When I went and double checked the video on this thing to see where that connected to, when I pulled the bundle out, it wasn't on anything. And being that it's a eye hole wire connector, eye hole terminal, it's not something I can just pop off unless there's a screw missing from somewhere. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll come up with a solution for that. Meanwhile, we got to attack the throttle cable, which is supposed to go on the opposite side of the tin. It goes through a port here. There we go. Okay, and then it goes over this pulley that's here. Is that even a pulley? Does it move? No. Uh, that's something somebody homemade. That's interesting. <laughs> Does that thing even turn? I don't think it even needs to be there. I mean, I don't have one on my fastback. No, the pulley turns. Okay. If it's a turning pulley and it works, let's leave it. Okay, we need to find our throttle hold fast. The little barrel connector, as people would call it. There it is. These guys, your throttle cable passes through it. Wow, why is that so tight? That's interesting. It was tight, now it's fine. But, what I think we need to do, as I'm looking at this here, I think this, this uh, arm needs to go over about half an inch because it's too close to the fuel lines where it is right now, so we're gonna, we're gonna move that. I just don't like where that's at at all. There's nothing good about that. Okay, well I gotta get a Allen key to go in there to loosen that up and it looks like it's uh, I'd say about a five millimeter so let's see what we got. Alright, down below here in the engine compartment I connected a T to the balance pipe which runs down and out of it to the uh, automatic transmission so that way it has the vacuum that it needs in order to shift properly. Anyway, no big deal, put a little brass connector on there and it uh, looks good to go. Wait a minute now. Look at that. Ah, look at that. And that's exactly why we don't put a fuel filter inside of your engine compartment. Looks like it might have got a little brittle from the heat. Interesting. It looks pretty new. Doesn't look particularly worn. This is a different kind of plastic on this side. Well, I guess it doesn't feel particularly brittle, but yeah, it broke. There it is. Anyway, we were eliminating that anyway, but now it comes out a whole lot easier. <laughs> All right, I put a nice coupler in here, but it is metal. So I made a little insulator just to wrap around it, whatever it's worth. Could cause vapor lock, right? We'll just get it covered up. There we go. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, good. Next. All right, inside here, let's snug up the wire to the alternator. That nice and snug. I'm going to put a zip tie on this here, just to tie these two together to keep them out of the throttle linkage. Just like that.
very nice. All right, right here, let's the throttle linkage. This turned out to be a four millimeter and not a five. Very sticky. <laughs> Oh, that's much better. So I think it needs to be, instead of here, it needs to be like over here, because you can see that pulley that's behind it, way up in there, is kind of a kind of at an angle. So the throttle cable would be pulling on a slight diagonal. Looks like it would fall right about there. So that thing was it was off by like three quarter of an inch to the left, in my opinion anyway. I'm sure somebody could have always done it differently than me, but that just looks right to me. And looking at the top of the oil cooler, I see wear marks on it that looks like the throttle cable was, was rubbing on it. So anyway, that's a better solution. That's gonna fit a whole lot better and should be a little easier to get some of the slack out of the thing too. Okay, now I gotta find my barrel connector for that thing because I misplaced it. <laughs> but it's here somewhere. Right, I'm looking at all these electrical connectors under here, and I think every one of them was bullshit. So I redid several of them, and now I'm shrinking them all just to make sure that they're all safe and they don't break off, because a lot of them just, I don't know, whoever crimped them on didn't put a strain relief on the end of it or anything, and the shrink will be just a, a good option for that. It'll keep the end of the wire protected. torch doesn't like to be held upside down. It's just gonna have to live with it. <laughs> Thankfully there's no fuel in the engine compartment anymore, otherwise I probably wouldn't be doing this. Reconnect everything. And I will have more confidence that these things aren't going to break or come apart in the future. Ah, oh, this is so much better. No more exposed copper sticking out of the ends of these things. Uh, this is yeah, this is the way it should be. Better than the way Volkswagen had it new, actually, because everything is so well covered. Volkswagen wiring, as you know, is usually a rat's nest and everything is exposed. All it takes is a, <laughs> a keychain. Throw your keychain on your wiring harness and watch what happens. <laughs> okay. God. Negatory wire. Negatory. Oh, look at that. I managed to burn some of the hair off my arm. Ah, oh, this is so much better. Everything is now rigid. No more floppiness. Good. Okay. I am much happier with that. Gives me the confidence I need to fight off my demons. <laughs> All right. All right, here's our bellows. And it attaches where we put the bag that covered the opening on the engine to the little port right here on the body. Type 3s are really nice because they added a lot of these um, more elegant features, I suppose, than what the Type 1 had previous before them. Because as you know, the Type 3 was supposed to replace the Beetle, and I suppose it could have if it weren't so expensive. That's why they didn't catch on. We get our clamps tight down in here. Mosquitoes are buzzing around in the engine compartment. They're coming up through the engine compartment to bite my hands. I'm surprised they don't just go after my legs and ankles like normal mosquitoes do. I hate this time of year for this, this reason. And here I want to move to the woods where there's going to be more mosquitoes. <laughs> I guess I can always close a shop door, right? Anyway, there's the bellows. I didn't give you a good look at it the last time, but... Yeah, that's how it connects, down in there, just like so. And then up here is where 
And then up here is where the ship stick goes in. Here it is. All right, now remember, there's no oil in here because we did not fill it with oil. I also didn't finish torquing down the oil strainer plate on the bottom. So I gotta do that before I put any oil in it. All right, we gotta put our distributor back together here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. And I'm pretty sure it's on position number four currently because I didn't turn the engine any since we did the valves. And of course we went backwards, one, two, three, four. I think it goes on like that, no? Maybe it goes on like this, there it goes. Click, click on the other side. And currently we're pointing to this cylinder, so this is number four. So this needs to go to cylinder number four. where big hands become big problems. <laughs> this would be cylinder number three. Look at how kink that cable is. <laughs> Very obvious reasons because number three is the hardest one to get to on account of this carburetor being here. Let's see, I'll do this real time, see if I can get it on here without cursing at it too much. I can't even find the hole. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Oh my. I can't get my hand in there at all. I might have to ask for help. I can't get a tool in there for sure. Getting my hand in there is a big no. Big negatory. Oh wait, did I get it? No, I don't, no I didn't. All right, we're gonna come back to that then. This will be number two. Two and number three. Let's see, number two is going to be this one. These are going to go down in this groove. And then there's a clip here which actually belongs on here, which is nice to see. These are always missing. hard one to reach too, but not nearly as hard as number three is. There it is. Okay. It looks like we got a little issue down here with this clip. I don't like how these are twisted. Let's switch it around. This clip is busted. Well, it's nice to look at. <laughs> it's just gonna be floating in space then. Even Ruby doesn't have one. Well, I'm just gonna take it off. It's unsightly. There we go. One of those things that's nice to have. I mean, it's great to see it, but right there, right there. And then lastly, almost lastly, we got the one that goes to the coil. That sucker's a little short. Just a little short. Pulls a little bit tighter than I would would have put it myself. Maybe I can loosen the coil and uh, oh, you know what? The coil actually pivoted just a little bit. That helped. It's not so pulled tight anymore. This is a really a tight fit in this area because this alternator was not designed to be on this vehicle. Yeah, it does not belong on there. Okay, good. And I'll fight with number three, but I'm gonna do that off camera. <laughs> right, I went ahead and pulled out the throttle linkage because I discovered on the little end piece over here, 
that there was no uh, hole for the return spring to go into, which was weird. There just was no place for it to attach to. So anyway, the spring was attached to the bottom, but just dangling, which made no sense to me. So I pulled it out, drilled a hole, and in the process somewhere, I lost the little bushing. Looks just like this. This is actually the one from the left side. The one from the right side fell out or something. I can't find it. I don't know what the hell happened. So what I'll do is I'll get on the 3D printer, take some measurements and print a new one out and get that set up. But otherwise, it's about to get dark. So I think we're going to be done for today. Otherwise, the wiring in here is beautifully organized. No more knots, no more messes. All the fuel lines are straight now. They're no longer crisscrossing with moving parts like throttle cables. Uh, yeah, all that stuff is now clearanced. Everything should, should fit fine in here without any rubbing, grinding, conflicting, crashing, you know, all of the problems that Volkswagens don't like. So anyway, on that note, we're going to wrap this one up for the evening, and we'll be back hopefully tomorrow if the rain stays up. I mean, the forecast today was rain, and geez, we didn't get any. It did get black as hell over there earlier, but no, no rain ever came down. It does look a little dark over there, but I don't know. Uh, like I said, we'll just wrap it up for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow, as long as the weather stays up. The following day. All right, we're going to handle our CV joints. Remember, we had these bagged up, keep them dry and clean while we were working on other stuff. Got to get this bag out of here. I hate CV joints, man. See, that's why. Barely touch anything, I'm already filthy. These usually aren't too bad, as long as you get the bolts to line up. I'm probably going to get the bolts lined up on one side, and then the other side, they're not going to line up, so I'm going to have to jack it up and spin the wheel, because you can't spin one axle at a time when the other axle is uh, locked up, because that's the way differentials work. So anyway, we'll get these bolts started in here with an impact, then we'll come back with a torque wrench and we'll get them all torqued down. good at that oh okay remember the donut that we didn't put the clamp on the last time now we're gonna do it here's the clamp apparatus yes one of the bolts is out of it because this is typically how I assemble them just like that wrap it around and I like to make the bolts face sideways because they're a lot easier to get to especially on a beetle so if you ever have to get under or making an adjustment on the exhaust or something you can Not a fan of this design. This uh, clamp is supposed to squeeze the pipes together by pinching the flanged edges. And it doesn't seem to want to do that because the clamp is a little smaller than it needs to be. I'm going to have to bend these little corners out just a little bit. No big deal. Alright. Got the little ears on them spread out just a little bit. Just did it with a pair of channel locks, nothing fancy. Don't need to overthink this stuff. But this design is not one I'm fond of. There's lots of better ways they could have done this, like a two bolt flange. In fact, some of the aftermarket pipes do have a two bolt flange. But if you're gonna develop an exhaust leak, this is typically the location where you're going to. Because, again, this design isn't quite <laughs> quite what it should be. Now, I like to face the bolts to the left and the right rather than up and down. As I said, it's a lot easier to get in here with a tool in the event that you have to take this back off someday. This is the most trouble one of these has ever been for me. Okay, now these I will not run on with an impact. These bolts break so easily and that's especially true of the aftermarket ones. The OEM ones, geez, they're so rusted out by now that a lot of them break too. But these are just 10 millimeters. And as you tighten it, make sure that it catches that expanded flange on the uh, pipes. If it doesn't, you're going to have that leak. Alright, we'll finish tightening this up and we'll show you when it's done. Alright, there it is. It's on. And all those corners are pinching together, all the flanges, so uh, we're good to go. 
do the one on the other side, and then that's done. And while I was under here, I also checked the torque on the uh, inside CV joint, and uh, it also looks like it's uh, torqued properly, so that's good sign. All right, I guess we're just about ready to come out from under here. That's why I don't like CV joints. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> My arm was nowhere near the CV joint, yet somehow I'm all covered in grease from it. I gotta be careful getting up here because it's gonna end up all over my clothes and all over the car and all over everything else. I said, all over my clothes. Don't even know how it happened. Just, I'm covered. <sighs> CV joints, man. Absolutely disgust me. I hate these things. Hey, well, no sooner I get up here to hit the record button again, the sun comes out, which is a good reason for me to retreat. But at the same time, it started thundering, so I don't know if I should go in because it's about to rain or because the sun's gonna fry me, but. <laughs> Let's get a few moments of uh, more video recorded here, but last night, remember, we had a problem with the uh, throttle bushing over here on this side. It, it got lost, or maybe it wasn't there. I have to check the older video, but uh, I took the one out of the left side, sat down with a pair of calipers and a little 3D rendering program, and 3D printed one. So there it is. It does look a little warped because I did crack it by accident when I was handling it, so I did put a spot of glue on it just to hold it back together. I'll print another one if I need to, but I think that's going to be okay, because the stress on this is... Uh, pushing outwards not so much bending it and that's what i did I, I just flexed it in my fingers and crushed it like a fool anyway um it seems to fit okay otherwise though it just uh drops into here just like that and then the ball joint there goes right into that and this bolts all together so i can get that assembled oh you know what the sun just retreated so yeah, maybe i get a few more minutes out here let me start reassembling this throttle linkage here, see if we can get this together. If this goes on and I get the shifter linkage in, then essentially it's ready to start and move once again. So we'll see where we're at here. Okay, the here pushing go. that was on that side is the one I made. I actually hand filed that just a little bit to make the tolerance on it just primo. So it fits really tight. You see how it fits nice and snug? Look at the stock one. I probably should print out a pair of them because, well, that fits so much better. So much incredibly better. Well, anyway, we'll see if we can get these carburetors balanced out properly. If they balance properly, we're just going to leave it be. But uh, looking good so far. All right, I'm happy with this stuff. Looks like we're good. I do need to put the return spring on, though, which is the reason why I took that off to begin with, because there was no hole drilled in it. <laughs> the spring was just dangling from one end without any way to attach it, and that's the way the previous, previous owner left it, and all the mechanics that have looked at it since left it that way. So anyway, Duckman can do better than that. So let's put the spring down on there. It's gonna be a little hard to get in there, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah, you can see that return spring is now properly attached. The greatest part is there was a return spring that was attached down here earlier when we first got the car. Now it doesn't need it because that's attached properly. So it actually springs back like it's supposed to. I still may add a return spring here because sometimes that just helps it to return to the uh, idle position. Which looks like it's, uh, yeah, it's off by just a hair. So anyway, yeah, I might just add it there anyway. It'd be nice if I could put a torsion spring on it. That would actually twist against the bar. But anyway, I gotta get out of the sun. The irony of it is it's about to rain, but it's the sun that's killing me. I gotta get out before I fry it. These white legs, which everybody likes to make fun of, but you know what? It's the same color as the rest of my body. Look. Because <laughs> I tan pink. That's it. It just happened to be hairy up here. Otherwise, yeah, I tan pink, see? Same color. I am a white boy. Oh boy, I need to get out of the sun, like right now. Yeah, there you go. Pouring rain in the sun. Not something I've ever captured here before, but happens on the regular. <laughs> and as I said, today was one of those days where, you know, it's gonna rain, but I had to stay out of the sun because I was gonna burn, but I didn't want to get wet either. Of course, nobody wants to get wet while you're working. But man, the rain has just been so intense. And look what it did to my yard. I gotta cut that thing. In fact, everybody's gotta cut their yards. Everybody's way overdue. And before you know it, those uh, grass cutting guys on YouTube are gonna be here clipping the whole neighborhood for free. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there it is, rain. Okay, well, that slowed me down on the project just a little bit. We'll just have to wait until it uh, dies down a little bit and get back out here. All right, now I did not torque this yet. These are only torqued to somewhere between five and eight foot pounds. Some people are gonna say, well, it needs to be exactly six. Well, these things are very mission critical that you do not over torque them because they screw into magnesium. I don't feel my torque wrench clicking. I don't wanna go too much further on that. I better check this torque wrench. I calibrated it inside. I need to show that method people have been asking, but it's not much to it. I just put the wrench in a, in a vise pull it with a hanging scale 
Yeah, this thing should be clicking off. I don't trust it. We're gonna stop for a moment. That was just me being overly cautious. When I was off camera, went ahead and checked it, and sure enough, there it is, we're good. Okay, all right, I think we're done under here. Just wanna make sure that's tight, that's steel on steel, that's 25 foot-pounds, but those are less mission critical because they're not threaded into soft magnesium. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and just make sure that's snugged up, and then we're done under here. That is right, completely finished underneath the vehicle. Hell yeah, well, for now, anyway. Gotta do brakes and shocks, but that's in the next video. All right, let's get out from under here. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. Street lights are coming on. See them down there. House light came on. Man, it is dark out here. I was just about to uh, do a little work and, man, I did not expect it to, um, yeah, street lights on up there too. I didn't expect it to, uh, <laughs> to start raining again, really. I thought I was gonna have a break. <laughs> All that's left in here is I wanna hook the bellows up and I wanna, geez, you guys can't see anything. I can't see anything. It is that dark out here. This is incredible. Anyway, it's just starting to rain again. I'm gonna go in. You can see it's actually clear way down there. That's where Taco Tuesday's gonna be when I'm going out Wild Bill in a little while. But uh, this is possibly the darkest I think I've ever seen it be, and it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. The street lights are on. I mean, well, not all of them. I guess they're all independently activated. That one just kicked on right there. <laughs> Yeah, down at the end of the street, they just came on. Way down there, here they are. It is dark out here. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I'm not getting anything done on this because this uh, rain stuff's not supposed to go away for several more hours. And man, I'm at the point where I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to install the bellows on here. Jeez, I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm looking here in the camera and I can't see a damn thing. Okay, well, all that's left is install the bellows and throw some gas in it and oil and turn the key well hook up the electric again i gotta reconnect the battery but uh, that should get it and then once it's running it's just a matter of making a little fine tuning and adjustments and then uh hooking up the shift linkage something i've never messed with before on an automatic so that's going to be a little bit of a new experience but we'll see when we get to that point fun stuff Ooh. let's not leave that in there okay because i don't know when we're gonna be coming back out here again this is uh there's the booming all right well we're going back in another street light just kicked on <laughs> yeah they must all be independently activated they must have their own light sensors on them yeah i've never seen them all come on independently i've never paid much attention to it before though but yeah my light's on all right well i'm going back in here comes the rain. Back up out here a little bit, but now it's pouring again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, uh, well, welcome to Florida, guys. You know the deal. It always rains here. It's always in the videos. Always a little bit of rain. Mm-hmm. Gushing, gushing. Some debris up there I need to get down. All right, finally stopped raining out here. Let's see if we can get a little bit of something done. I have the bellows here which need to be reinstalled, but we're not going to put them in just yet because if there's any problem with anything in this engine that doesn't run correctly or has some other issue, it's going to need to be addressed now, which means the bellows are going to have to come back off. So we'll put the bellows on last. And you know what? After all this rain, I see a puddle in here. Yeah, it's raining in a little bit here on the uh, left-hand side. There's just a little bit of rust right here on the deck. And you know what? This whole pad is wet. It's not even boom ass. Alright, well. I don't know where it's leaking from, but it's leaking from somewhere here on the left. I thought it was out of the window, but after looking, it looks like it's not wet. Oh wait, maybe it is. 
Yes, it's leaking out of the corner of this window. Okay, I'll talk to the owner about that. She might have me pull the window out and reseal it. The rubber seal looks like it's good, but it might need to have a little sealer or something behind it, a little butyl rubber or a little silicone or something. Generally, you wouldn't require that, but if the seal is not sitting correctly or if it was cheaply manufactured or something, it might be what's wrong. But yeah, the back corner here is leaking, and that's why we have a puddle. And that explains why this, uh, this door card, well, technically it's not a door card, but why the card is all floppy because the moisture got to it. Okay, well, I'll talk to her about that. The other ones look good. I don't see any leakages under here. Yeah, they're all good. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. Pull this and this out of here. We're going to dribble a little fuel down the carburetors. I think all the electrical connections are good. We're going to hook up the battery inside. And then we're going to turn the key. All right, oil is one of the biggest debates that you find on the internet. Uh, it's pretty bold of me to even talk about it. But you really can't beat what the manual tells you. And the manual for Volkswagens tell you you should have SAE 30, just regular 30 weight oil. I believe Volkswagen in Mexico did say 10W30. This is 1040, not what I would recommend for this in most cases. This 40 has more polymers in it than it has oil. It thickens when it gets hotter. But today we're using this more as a, well, like a rinse. For whatever oil it's a residue that's already in there, I'm gonna run this one more time. And anything that's laying in the bottom of the engine going to have his chance to flush out. Let's see, we got to get about three quarts in there. 2.9 I believe is the accurate measurement. That being that it is a type 3, it does have a fill hole, or fill tube I should say, so the capacity will be a little higher. So we're going to put in roughly three. Three is typically what I do anyway. If you have three quarts of oil, you just put all three quarts in there. Don't worry too much about the extra ounces. All right. That should be enough to get it started. Let's give it a go. There it is. Perfect. Interesting. That cap fits differently than Ruby's does. It has a different feel to it. feels tighter. Actually, Ruby's must be more worn. It's probably a better seal on this there. Good. Right, okay. Yes, the can looks a little rusty, but it's clean on the inside. A little bit in there. A little bit in there. Helps not to miss. All right, that should get it. Well, I don't have time for that today. Because it's Taco Tuesday, that means this video is going to come out a day later. Sorry, guys. Approximately 10 hours later. Good morning, everyone. You probably remember yesterday, we couldn't get this car started. When I turned the key, it just would not crank. So I believe I probably have a wire located improperly on the back of that starter. So I'm going to check. It's probably the solenoid wire. It may have something to do with the hot start relay. There's a good possibility it may have come loose or probably, possibly, I didn't hook it up right, so I gotta stick my head up underneath here and figure out where it is. But I got a feeling that the solenoid wire on the back of the starter, because you can plug them in in wrong locations, that's probably what it was, because when I plugged it in, I was on this side of the engine and the starter's back here, so I just kind of plugged it by feel, and that's probably what it did. So I'll stick my head underneath there, see if we can figure it and out. There's the solenoid wires and the hot start relay. This wire here can be plugged in on the terminal that's on the other side. I don't know which one is the correct one, but I just moved it from the one on top to this one. So we'll see if that does it when I turn the key. And it might. If it does, we win. All right, see what we got. We got ignition, we got lights on the dashboard, and we got no go. Now in this car, you don't have to step on the brake pedal or anything like that to get it to start. Uh, so there's no reason that I'm doing anything wrong. It's just the way cars were back then. But uh, all right, I gotta figure out wiring, and I guess I gotta get on there with a voltmeter and figure out exactly what I did wrong or where the broken electrical connection is because that's a good possibility something's just broken. All right, we'll figure it out. I the connections by shorting them out with a screwdriver and it turns out I had the yellow wire on the correct terminal to begin with. So I moved it back where it belongs. I just started looking around under here and started poking around and it became very obvious what was wrong. Here's your uh, hot start relay. Look at the ground wire. <laughs> Not attached to anything, yeah, and in fact the relay is not even in the socket all the way. 
So I'm gonna have to uh, pull this apart and probably put a new connector on that uh, socket. Uh, I'll see what it takes to extract the uh, particular connector from the inside of this socket. I said I wanted to relocate this thing. This might be an opportunity now since I'm gonna have to take it apart. I don't like this thing anyway. This is just terrible, whoever did this. This is garbage. All right, we'll see if I can locate the red wire under the back seat, and if I can, um, then that's probably what we're gonna do, is just relocate everything to the inside, because this is, this is just nonsense. <laughs> you know, I figure before I go through all the effort of relocating the relay, let's find out if it's even necessary. I hook the red wire up directly to the starter the way it's supposed to be, eliminating all of the hot start relay stuff. So before I even try to fix it, let's see if I even need it. Who knows? Whoever the previous owner was of this thing could have uh, installed it thinking that it was going to solve another problem. So we may not even need it at all. Right, we already dribbled some gas down the carburetors from yesterday. Probably is still in there. Throttle's attached. Got our electrical is still good. Spark plugs, I believe, are in correct locations. All right. One more time. Here we go. And like I said, you don't have to step on the brake pedal for this one. So, oh, look at that. Okay. Well, clearly it doesn't need a hot start relay, does it? I'll well, get some fuel in the system. Might need to dribble a little more gas in there. As once we get it to uh, fire, it'll run the pump a whole lot faster. All right, well, here we go. Here we go again. A little bit of casoline. Casolina. Oops, nice if I got it in the carburetor. Don't do too much if you're gonna do this, guys. You want enough, but not too much you're gonna flood it, and I probably already did that. I forget which one of these holes is a breather. I actually probably should have tried to have uh, gotten it in that hole because that will fill the bowl of the carburetor. And don't get too much on top of it like I just did because, well, you can start a fire. Now my fire extinguisher is right in the garage, just inside the door as always, whoop, right in there. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. One more try. Oh, getting tired, ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and here goes. Oil pressure light went out, that was good. All right, now the fuel pump's starting to give it gas. Still gotta balance those carburetors though. There it is. The engine's so much quieter than it was before. It's, uh, it's in gear even though it's in park. I gotta check the linkage. There's an adjustment procedure that you're supposed to do to it. Good thing I have the uh, heat brake on. <laughs> all right, well it's running again. And it sounds like it's all cylinders. This is good. Guess we can put our air cleaners back on here until we get this thing resynced. I smell the uh, New J tube starting to burn off the paint. That's a lovely smell. <laughs> All right, we'll come out here and resync the carburetors after this. Whoops, these are coming off. And then uh, looks like it's just a matter of some adjusting, some adjustments, and we'll go from there. And also, before we end this video, there's a water puddle over here. And this door card, well, it's not a door card, but it's card nonetheless, it's all wet on the back, looking a little moldy. I think we're leaking around the window here, and I talked to the owner, and she said, uh, pull the window out. We're gonna have a look to see if there's any rust or what have you behind there. If for some reason it's leaking and it needs to be fixed, I might just be able to put a little glue behind it and seal it up, because it does look like it's a new seal. I don't want to replace it because they never match. In fact, these aren't even a good match anyway. They may have been replaced already. Look at the other side. Yeah, this one matches that one, but this one doesn't match that one. So somebody did something. Oh, the engine's 
Sounds pretty good otherwise though. Never should have left this by the exhaust. In case it backfires, I could have blown myself up. But fantastic. And there's the water puddle. And the water that was getting in the car. It was dripping down in through here and down on the ground. All right, I got an oil pan underneath it just in case something leaks, but I don't think we got any leaks at all. I think everything's good. Good, okay. Shut it back off, move on to the next thing. Oop. Right, we're gonna change out that distributor. We got a very, very nice 034 distributor that's going in there to replace the 009, which does not belong on a Volkswagen automobile engine. And for those of you that are just tuning in, I am very adamant about that. These 009 distributors are good for generators, they're good for compressors, they might even be good on an aircraft or a tractor. They generally would work well on things that run the same RPM all the time. Cars accelerate, cars slow down, cars will accelerate from the stop, cars will change speed very, very frequently. It's not like one of those other applications. And these 009s, they have a noticeable stumble, especially when you first get off the line, because they don't have a vacuum advance. That's what this little canister does on the side here. It actually advances the distributor as soon as you get on the gas pedal. It attaches to the side of the carburetors. And unless you have a carburetor that does not allow you to have such a provision, in that case, change out the carburetor because your carburetor's crap. But um, that would be the only other reason you would want to run a rub. That would be the only other reason you would want to run a 009. Unless, of course, maybe you had a drag car. Because what do drag cars do? Two speeds. Idle, if it idles. Or wide open. <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs> anyway, um, we're about to pull this distributor out. Down below there, there's a little 10 millimeter nut, which you would just simply loosen. You don't have to go much, maybe about one turn. And the whole distributor should pull right up. Whoa. Should pull out of there. But this is um, wasn't even tight to begin with. Geez, I wonder if the timing was even right on it. No, it may not have been right on it. The timing could have been off all along. Well, anyway, we'll get under there. And we'll uh, pull this distributor out. First, let's get the cap off of here. Why is that so loose? Is just somebody not paying attention when they put this together? I guess so. Anyway, we know we had it running on this distributor. And this is why I'm saving this for last, guys, because I like to change one thing out of the time. So that way, if you have a problem, you know exactly what the problem is. You don't start blaming everything else along the way or start wondering what's a what's a. I can say, hey, if it doesn't run, I just change the distributor. The distributor is there for the problem. My release from the coil. Fucker. Okay, here we go. 10 millimeter. I wonder how loose it even is. <laughs> We're about to find out. Yeah, it wasn't tight. I mean, not even a little tight. Needs about one complete turn. Each one of these is roughly a quarter of a turn. You don't have a lot of play in here, and even less because of this uh, alternator bracket, which normally this car wouldn't have. The distributor should come right up and out, just like that. That's all there is to it. The new distributor will go right into place. Usually, you want to put a little oil around the rubber seal that's on here. We just run a little bit around that. You don't want to chew up the seal as you push it in. It's kind of odd that that rubber gogi is so small. Look at that. Really weird. All right, now I don't remember the best way to put this in here. Being a Type 3, you have limited clearance. So whichever way you get it is the way it's going to stay. See, if I drop it in like that, I can't adjust the tuning because it's going to be in the way of the fuel pump. It's going to have to go in. It's going to have to go in like that. would ordinarily not be the case, but this is because it's a Type 3. Alright, here we go. Let's see which way does this need to be oriented. This uh, little shaft here has two little tabs on it, and they're offset as you can see. It's got a greater mass on one side than the other, and this is so you don't key it in backwards. Although I've seen people that have managed to do that somehow. <laughs> I don't even know how, but they managed to get it in backwards, and it didn't run, of course, because it didn't engage properly. But you'll know once it's engaged, and that appears to be it. 
All right, yes, we can adjust the timing from here. That's good, excellent. How far to the left can I turn it? That's it, far to the right, yeah, that's it. So the canister is gonna be on that side. That may affect your number one position depending upon which uh, distributor you get or who makes it. Now you know what, actually, this is on and oriented properly. Number one is still in the same position, so it, it actually is correct. Because the distributor cap does lock in the way it was before without me moving any wires around. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to get onto that 10 millimeter bolt that we loosened up before. And I just want to snug it just a little bit, so that way the distributor won't pop up because if it pops up your engine's gonna eat its friggin crank up ask me how I know this distributor must be in there to engage the drive shaft for the distributor which engages on the uh, the brass drive gear on the uh, crank if there's no object holding that thing on it will it'll eat itself alive anyway I just want to snug this up enough that there's a little friction on it so that way I can still turn it but not enough that it's gonna pop on out of here we almost got it. I'm starting to feel the bolt snugging. A little more. Yeah, it should be good. Actually, it's just a little tight. Let's undo it just a little bit. There we go. Alright, on these wires, these are nice floppy silicone coated wires. And I guess with silicone anyway, as soft as they are. But I put new ends on it. I don't bother with the garbage ends that they provide to you because these little things are really hard to crimp when they're already inside of an insulator. I use some really, really good ends, these here, with a proper crimping tool that squeezes them together. And then I use some shrink tubing and I wrap the whole thing up and make a nice solid mass on the end that doesn't break off. You want to ask me why I do that? <laughs> I'll be glad to tell you in depth. <laughs> wires up under here we get our negative hooked up to the negative side of the coil and on the negative side of the coil nothing else should ever attach that is strictly to fire fire the coil its only purpose so if you have another object connected on the side of it like your backup lights or something it's wrong it's completely wrong so get it off of there all right we have our Carlos one day showed up at the Volkswagen club meeting with his Beetle, and I think I've only ever seen him out in public with his Beetle like twice, maybe three times, because he can't keep it running reliably for any amount of time. And it was just running really, really bad, and nobody could figure it out when they all looked at it. And as soon as I looked at the coil, I said, what are all these extra wires here that are on the negative side? Well, I don't know. So I went and disconnected all of them except for the distributor, and when he started it up, it ran great. It was just getting such a weak spark. And it, uh, it would stumble, it would misfire, it would just not fire at all on certain cylinders. Anyway, that solved the problem, so. All right, here we go, one distributor. Some people like these little plastic covers. These were never OEM to a Volkswagen uh, air-cooled. These came on Volkswagen Golfs, but they do retroactively fit. Now, some people put them in there because it keeps the oil fog down inside the distributor, as opposed to getting it up inside the, uh, inside the cap. So it can happen. It is a bit of a moisture barrier for whatever it's worth, but you don't have to put it in. In fact, if you're having problems with your ignition, sometimes I found that these things will get hung up. Just get it, get it out of there. Okay. Um, I want to put our I'm gonna stuff this thing in because it's not known for being an issue yet on this thing. Let's put our rotor in there. It's doing what it's supposed to do. No, it's not engaging. Why? We having an issue already. Oh, we're not engaged in the engine. I thought we were in there all the way. Guess we're not. Now it's engaged. 
yeah, do make sure that that's engaged because as I said, if it's not, like it's doing right now, it will eat your engine when you try to start it. I don't know which position is the correct position here. All right, we're gonna have to look at this more closely. We're not engaged. Sometimes you have to hit the lip of this with a rubber mallet, just gently, for it to seat, but you gotta make sure that those tabs are in the correct place, because if they're not, you're wasting your effort. All right, we'll be right back. Well, of course, I shut the camera off just for a moment, and I pushed down on it, and the whole distributor went clunk, and it's in place now. I mean, yeah, never fails. As soon as I shut off the camera is when I have a breakthrough, every single time. This is doing what it's supposed to do now. Okay, now we want to put our new cap on. We're not going to go with the old cap. There it is. These little clips locked in. Clippity doo da. Not a whole lot of room to move in here if you're large handed, such as I. Here we go. Alright, now, putting our wires back into position. This is the greatest part of this because they did it this way without upsetting anything. I just put the wires in the same spots that they used to be. Something my dad taught me years before I started working on cars. Pull off one wire at a time from your distributor cap. And look, it came apart. Got a bad coil wire here. I'm gonna have to fix that. You know, it's a copper cord wire. Why is that stuck in there like that? Never seen one get stuck. Ugh. Now I see it's a little chewed up. That's why. In fact, look, it's somebody else's cob job of a crimp. <laughs> cob job of a crimp job. That's just garbage. Okay, well, we're gonna fix that. I happen to have the right crimping tool here, so we'll get that straight and then we'll put it back on. See? Nice having the right crimping tool, isn't it? All right, we'll put that back together. Back down here, and then into the coil. And this one is a little short. This is probably the reason why it was having issues to begin with. It's not the end of the world, but it is just a little short. Probably what your wife tells you. All right. Uh, this in here. This down. Okay. With the vacuum line off, this is how we're going to set the timing. And I think it's about in the position it needs to be in order to start it. So if I turn the key right now, it should fire up. Got all the wiring hooked up properly. Don't hook up an electronic ignition like this has improperly or you will fry it. They don't like to be hooked up backwards, for example. I don't like the way these wires are routed here. We're going to fix that. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Less of a tangloid you miss. Alright, number one is there, number two is here. Number one, I'm going to take a number two. Alright. Let's fire him up. Alright, clearly timing is off a little bit. <laughs> advancing it. Maybe it's too advanced. Let's try tarting it a little bit. Cute! Woo! Woom! <laughs> That made it fire. I didn't realize I left the ignition on. All right, real quickly, I had a look under here and I wound it around the top dead center. And I noticed it was not pointing at either cylinders number one nor cylinder number three. So if the crank is at top dead center, that's one of those two would fire, depending upon which position, you know, the rest of it is in. Depending upon which position the rest of the engine is in, but the crank is actually showing top dead center. So I noticed it was pointing at cylinder number four. 
So that means that all of my spark plug wires need to be shifted 90 degrees to the left. So I had to move everything over one spot, you know, counterclockwise. And in doing so, it appears that it's probably going to fire at this point. So, in other words, cylinder number one is here instead of here. So, we should be good to go at this point. At least that's what I'm looking at. Looking at the position that it's in. Currently, it's still a top dead center and it's pointing towards three. So, we're taking a chance. If not, now I have to reverse the wires. So, if this doesn't get it, then I'm going to have to reverse those wires. Flip flop at them, but I think we were just one position off. But that should get it cranking. The timing should be approximately in the ballpark right about here. Of course, we'll use the uh, timing light I got right here to actually get it set. And we're not worried too much about the uh, idle timing. We're worried about maximum advance. That's what we're going for here. This uh, vacuum on the distributor is very nice. It actually blocks the fuel lines from uh, getting into the uh, throttle cable. Oh, added bonus right there. It actually just gives it an obstacle. Well, let's go ahead and crank it and see what happens. Yeah, there it is. It's a little stumbly, but it's all part. Yeah, there it is. See? It's not timed, but... Time, but it's in the ballpark right now. Okay, let's get our ignition timing set on it and see what happens. Actually, that sounds so much better already, and I haven't even hooked up the vacuum cord on it. The uh, timing curve on this thing is just different. I can tell that already. <laughs> All right, well, let's get her dialed in. All right, we got the engine good and warm. Let's hook up our timing light. We got our negative, which goes to ground, not to the negative side of the, the uh, not to the negative side of the coil. Just ground. Anything that's grounded, except for the negative side of the coil. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Not the negative side of the coil, because it could interfere with your ignition signal. And you want a positive. You can pick up the positive side of the coil for that one. And then lastly, we have our inductor. This is the one that goes to spark plug wire number one. And try to get it away from the other spark plug wires. Don't hook it up over here because it may pick up a false signal. And we're going to dial in 32 degrees before top dead center. And we're going to rev the engine up to around 3,500 RPMs. You don't have to have a tachometer to figure this. You just rev it up until it stops advancing. Again, this is with the vacuum line off. We want 32 degrees, and you can see it's flashing now. So we've got signal. All right. So right now, with how it's sitting, I'm at... top dead center. It's actually in time for idle. We'll set it to 32 and we'll rev it up. Getting a false signal over here. There, that or my positive is loose. I'm blinking intermittently here. Hang on, something's wrong with my wiring. Yeah, we're skipping a beat. There it goes. because this is draping over the other wire. I think that's exactly what it was. This was laying over both the wires. Now 
was firing reliably. All right, once again, 32. turned on it. Wherever the idle winds up is where the idle winds up. Max advance is what we're looking for. Now we'll hook our vacuum line up to it and we're done with the distributor. And like a dumbass I did say prematurely that we're done and there's nothing else we need to do but that's incorrect because you got to get down here and we got to tighten up that bolt on the distributor otherwise we're in the same condition that we were <laughs> when we started and that's with a distributor that uh, wasn't in time or was loose anyway but how well this thing is idling i'm going to say that it had to have been off all along Whew, that uh paint on the j tubes that's uh starting to bake on really stinks oops goodbye wrench nice knowing you <laughs> i think the distributor's tight now it is but the wrench went way down in there yeah, we'll fish that out <laughs> there we go, the magic of magnets. <laughs> I'll fire this up one more time for you guys. This thing was so much trouble to start before. Uh, even when it was warm, it would just, it would sputter, it would spit, it didn't want to idle. The idle was really low. And mind you, I haven't messed with the carburetors yet. The settings that were on these things are still the way that they were. So it's pretty safe to say that the distributor had turned because it wasn't tight, it was out of time, plus it was a 009, so it never could have been right to begin with. But watch how easily this thing starts now. This is an incredible night and day difference. See what I mean? Listen to it. It purrs. It doesn't choke anymore. It doesn't gag on its own cock. It purrs. And I haven't even hooked up the vacuum line yet. Once we get that hooked up, it's not going to have that stumble off the line. Which is what a 009 does. Essentially, that will do the same thing if you don't have the vacuum line on there. The vacuum port on that side was connected to the transmission, which is not the way it's supposed to be. And the port on that side was capped off. So what I did was I took the cap over there and put it on there. We moved the transmission to down under here on the balance pipe where it's supposed to be. And since the cap is off on this side, we'll just use a little short hose to run it over from there to the, uh, the port. And then it should advance properly when we get on the throttle. So we're going to um, get a vacuum line for that and hook it up. That should finish the distributor installation. Then we'll get on to balancing the carburetors. Yeah, I guess it's as good a time as any for a break. And you know what the best part is of being retired at such a young age? Having a blue cup with lunch. <laughs> hmm. I haven't done this in a long time. I miss my blue cups, and I'm sure you guys do too. <laughs> mm. Today it's a little bit of bourbon, some salted caramel whiskey, good old American, Red can of cola. <laughs> I need to make up my own red. I need to make up my own cola brand and just call it Red Can Cola. You got to drink it in the blue cup. Wow, well, sounds good. What the hell? Sounds very bipartisan of me. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we're taking a break, as you can see right here. And as long as this doesn't hit me too hard, we're gonna go take a trip over to the store. We're gonna get some plumbing plugs to cap off the air outlets on the engine and pick up some vacuum line and then we got to finish adjusting the transmission there's a procedure for that I gotta look up the manual to it and I don't remember how something about lifting both the back wheels up and turning them forwards until there's a clunk and then tightening down the shifter linkage so there's only one bolt on it I mean it, it can't be that hard but it does have to be correct because certainly when you put it in park it's in reverse so it's definitely not right the <sighs> the little um cable needs to be I guess retracted a little bit, but it shouldn't be too hard. We'll get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Needed that really bad. Now this is to demonstrate for those of you that don't want to listen to me. Right now the 034 distributor has no connection to any vacuum. Okay, so if we give it some vacuum, 
you hear how the engine tone changed because of advanced timing. Now, if we try to give it throttle, stumble. See the stumble? Just like a 009. But, if we advance the vacuum, no stumble. That's why you need a single vacuum dual advanced distributor. This is the reason for it. <laughs> anyway, there's our vacuum line. We're going to get this hooked up. Then we're going to balance off our carbs and we're going to hook up our bellows. But otherwise, I think we're pretty much done for today. I've done enough for this video. It's already going up a day late. It'll be on Thursday by the time you see this and not Wednesday. So, for those of you that are watching, Clicky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Thank you so much for watching. Check out DuckShit.net and look at my wish list that's up on the top. It'll give you some spoilers for some of the things that are coming up because you'll see some of the things that I'm going to be purchasing for upcoming projects. Now, if you'd like to help me with something, I thank you for that. You don't have to do it, but I really do appreciate it. I have some stuff coming in for the go-kart, which some of my fans have sent me that are on that list. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. But I guess that's going to be it for now. So, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. See, stumble, stumble. No stumble. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Horse clamps. Horse clamps, free ones. Already used. Could use them again. <laughs> Horse clamp. <laughs> Hey, where the hose at? Got this hose clamp. It's gonna go right over the casting here on the end, which will stop these two pieces from splitting apart when we put the plug in the end of it, just like that. That's gonna seal all of our cooling air in there so it goes properly where it's supposed to go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We are all sealed up. All sealed up on the other side just the same. Good to go. Cooling is now sealed like it should be. Gotta drop them bellows in. As I said, last thing going on is the bellows. I trust everything on this engine at this point. She's good to go. So we take the bellows, we wrap the clamps around it. We're going to drop it into place in between the engine and the uh, back half of the body here and try to stretch it over the lip and then we'll get it clamped in there. But make sure you put the clamps over the rubber first. Otherwise you get open the clamps way up and then close them back up, which is a real pain in the ass. You ask me how I know. <laughs> Anyway, let's throw it in there. All right, one bellows boot attached. Hose clamp here, hose clamp there, big ones. But we're all sealed up the whole way around. When you put those on, you make sure the hose clamp doesn't slip off one of the edges or something, because they can do that. So they tighten it the whole way around, and what happens is uh, if it does slip off, it'll pop off in one of the, the ends, because this is kind of oblong. It's kind of like a football shape. For those of you that are American, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that are overseas, it's more like a lemon. <laughs> it's not exactly round it's very oblong all right well anyway bellows is on there we're good this thing effectively is uh safe to drive yeah it's safe to drive once again well good wrapping up and we'll see you in the next video all right fast way to get the ramps out Ready for this?
reach for the shifter. <laughs> That's something, right? In a much more stable video. Joystick controlled. Yes, sir. <laughs> Power boss grips. That's one. it. That'll work. Rob would know what I mean when I say chop house. Idea. So what you got, me? Oh, look at that. Running and driving again, man. Oh shit, oh, I forgot to cover yeah. that fake license plate on the front there. Uh, the illegal one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's gonna haul it. Well, who knows? Yeah. But oh, she's man. running and driving again, man. That 034 distributor made all the difference in the world on that thing. Because that thing was just, it was choppy. Just really you choppy when he first got off the road. Yeah, it was loose. So the timing trail. was definitely wacky. Yeah. And she paid to have somebody time it also. I had discussed it with her uh, so before she got it back. So it may have been timed, but if the distributor did one of these because he didn't tighten it properly. And me. Well, no, no, it wasn't. It was... <laughs> Oh, some guy in Georgia, apparently. Just some guy in Georgia who had her car for a year. And here she's only... I've only had it for a couple weeks, and she's going to get it back better than it ever was. And, you know, well, anyway, she, she's overjoyed so far. I've been sending her photos, giving her updates, and it runs good, man. I mean, yeah. you want to see something that it never did before? Yeah, it doesn't sound like mine. <laughs> Watch this. That's right on it money. never did that before. Yeah. I used to have to get in there and flog the shit out of the throttle just to get it going, and then it would die. <laughs> wow, looks like you got some gifts too. Yeah, those are the rear disc brakes I got to put on there. On here, but yeah, but on here, um, I haven't even synced the carbs yet. I just put them back on the same way they were. I haven't messed with the screws on them. I'm still going to because yeah. they're not working yeah, they're as they should be. Yeah. Right, they're off a little bit. The left one opens before the right one does, and we're still only getting 85% throttle. So it's going to be much better by the time I get done with it. But here we are, just wrapping up the video for today. Decided to take it for a ride. Man, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, everything's working again. Uh, does she know this yet? I have not told her yet. <laughs> but I have given her updates all day, so yeah, she knew yeah, that it was yeah. running, she knew that it was better, and she knew that things were coming along. Yeah, I sent her pictures. There. And, I mean, that's gonna be like, I mean, this thing just... She might have a big old. Uh, she might have to let me keep it, because I'm kind of starting to, to like it. Uh, I got one in, in the backyard. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want that one. It's 69. <laughs> that one, that one. Is that what it's going to cost me? A lot. <laughs> no, you said 69. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No. Sorry. Well, I ain't giving you in on that. No. Don't need that. So, but there it is. Uh, you need to go over there and swing by and see uh, Jeff and uh, get your reimbursement for the meal that he walked out on last Yeah, night. last time we went to Taco Tuesday and Jeff decided not to pay and walked out. <laughs> so the lady's like, oh, here's all three of your bills. And I was paying for a while bill because it's my turn. And yeah. I was like, three? What the hell? And it's like, yeah, Jeff left without paying. Oh, God, my God, Jeff. Apparently, as the story goes, I made a joke that Jason, who was sitting at the table, was going to pay for everybody because you know Jason, he's an asshole. We do that everywhere. So I Every tried Christmas to make it, we go to, and I know? tried to make a joke on Jason because I want to hear him get loud. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't. He yeah. actually was quiet for a change. But uh, 
Jeff apparently believed it was true. <laughs> I cracked up. That was when we started off, too. I mean, I had yeah. just sat down, and then she was asking about the billing. And, yeah, I remember making a joke. Well, I mean, anyway. just about every restaurant we go to, when they bring the bill, you say, I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want or, it. You know, no, I didn't order that. Uh, the, Give it to the owner. Yeah, the owner's going to pay for it. Yeah. Give it to your favorite dishwasher, you know, something. You know, we pass it on. But Jeff, he was like... Jeff believed it this time. <laughs> well, anyway, you got it. But, you know... It's not a wonder that people take advantage of the elderly. <laughs> That's quite possible. I have deposited some money into your bank account by accident. Can I be getting it back so I'm not fired from my job? <laughs> Just yeah, give me your bank account number and I will handle the transaction. Not a problem. <laughs> there was one circulating around where the guy actually ripped off the scammer. Yeah. Somehow. That was, yeah. that was funny. Yeah, or, or the one where they sent the box of roaches to their office oh, yeah. and they hacked their cameras so they could see the roaches running around. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is great. I hear a little squeak. I think the exhaust pipe's doing something. That's what it is. Yeah, there's a little something going on under there. I'll just check the joints on to make sure everything's snug. But otherwise, I got nothing to complain about. We'll sync up the carburetors tomorrow, start the brakes, and it might leave as soon as Friday. Wow. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I'm hoping to get that double jam out of here pretty soon, too. Good. That's been there for months. Yeah. Wait, wait <laughs> double cab. Smash and grab. Double cab. 68. All right. That's the way he wants to keep it, too. If oh, I had yeah. it, I would get it mechanically sound like that. And leave it bashed in, huh? Yeah. All right. All right, when it's you going to paint it? It is painted. Yeah, it is painted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. That is, that is great. Isn't that nice? That, that is a nice looking car. That is a very sharp looking little car. That one will turn heads. It did. Mainly people are going to go, what kind of car is that? You know, they, they, you don't, you don't see them. They're very rare. Very rare. That's it. All right, well... Thank you, Wild Bill. We're going to wrap up this video. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by. Oil is the biggest debate you see on the internet. You know, we got a train horn, man. You guys never hear that. But yeah, we do have a train. Oil is one of the biggest debates that you hear on the internet when people start talking automotive stuff. Man, that fucking train. Holy shit. All right, I guess we'll just wait. Bullshit train. Here comes the boom ass. I swear she turned it on as soon as she came within, I don't know, half a house distance from my house. She's got to turn that crap on. Every time. Just garbage, man. Total garbage. Boom, 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 and out of the ass. <laughs> Not on her pocket this time, though.